thank you for your love, for your election, predestination, calling, justification, and promise, glorification. We have been chosen, we have been called, saved, and to be saved in further sense. We have been saved in the spirit, we will be saved in the body. And now we are on the path of sanctification to be saved in the soul. And that depends not just on your sovereignty, but our cooperation. We come to you to confess that we have not been totally cooperating with the Holy Spirit, whom you have sent to live in us, making our body the holy temple of God now. But there are so much noise from the world and from our flesh and sometimes from Satan that we have been attracted away from the still small voice of the Holy Spirit who is mighty but gentle and who will not tell us anything unless we seek for him. So we come to you to confess that we have not listened to the Holy Spirit all the time in all the aspects of our thing and to do in the life. So in that way, we have not been perfect in the way that we should have been. Since you are our Father and you are perfect, we should aim at that goal. And yet, we have fallen short of your glory. As expected, but it is still not the ideal. So we come to you to confess for all the thoughts, words, and actions that have uh, fallen short of the image of Christ, which is the total balance of all personality. And, and uh, we, on the other hand, have went to extremes in this way or another. So, Father, we pray that through our confession today that you will grant us your promise to remove the, the guilt and to cleanse our conscience, to fill us with the Holy Spirit as we seek so. And uh, in that way, you will empower us to stand up against all temptations. For you have promised that you, you always give us another way. We pray that with this confession, you will let us remember Christ's grace, and we will live in the proper response to the grace, which is gratitude, which produces obedience. And we pray that obedience will produce blessing. We pray in Jesus Christ's holy name.
our communion devotionals who have been going through the Beatitudes, which is very important. It's the New Testament um, constitution of the spiritual kingdom of God. Just like the Decalogue is the outline of the Old Testament constitution for the visible kingdom of God. So for Christians, it's of uttermost importance. It describes the path of uh, transformation that God has designed for a new humanity from the old to the new. It's a bridge. Okay? The four, four steps going around, it's going around our soul, injecting the new life, and the second is going around again, taking away the old lives. Okay? The first beatitude, remember, it was blessed are the poor in spirit, those who are humble enough to recognize that they cannot be worthy of heaven by themselves. Then the kingdom of heaven opens for them. That is God turning us from uninterested people to seekers. The second one is God, blessed are those who what? Who mourn. Mourning for what? For their sins. Okay? And when they do so, the, uh, the conviction have reached to our own hearts, and then we are open to be comforted by the grace. Okay? And that's how God turned us from a non-believer, from a seeker, to a believer, to a born-again people. Now we are in the kingdom. And then the first step, once you're in the kingdom, is the assurance of salvation, which comes in the third beatitude. Blessed are those who are those who are meek, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek are those who are sure that they will inherit the earth. Therefore, they don't mind losing a little faith or money for the sake of Christ. Those who can take a loss for Christ's sake. Uh, things that are rightfully theirs, but for Christ's sake, they will give up. And then that is the assurance of salvation, proven. Okay, the external proof, the internal proof is peace, external proof is meekness. And after that is the path of sanctification. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled or satisfied. Okay? God guaranteed for the sons of God, those who have been saved and are on the path of sanctification, that if you seek, you shall find. If you want righteousness, you pray, you will get it, okay? guaranteed. Okay? So this is the path of sanctification for us to go through the rest of our lives until uh, we are transformed through the resurrection, or rapture if we live in the right time. Okay? And uh, that's the first four steps. Okay? The second four steps going through the same path. Okay? So the, the fifth corresponds to the, the first. It says, blessed are those who what? What's the fifth? Merciful, okay, for they shall obtain or receive mercy, okay? Blessed are the, uh, those who forgive, for you shall be forgiven, okay? And if you don't forgive, you're not forgiven, okay? But this is not talking about eternal life, this is talking about the consequence of your sin while you live on the earth, okay? So if you are humble to enter the kingdom, you should remain the remain humble throughout your walk on this earth, okay? You know that you have sinned. That's how the kingdom opened to you. Once you are saved, you st should still recognize that you still sin. I mean, you don't have to sin now, but you usually do because of weakness, because of the inattention to the Holy Spirit because of the noise from the world and the temptations, and then you did not hold on to God's promise that you always have a way, way, way out. And that's the sin of weakness. This happens to everybody, okay? And if you say that I don't sin anymore after I believed, you're lying. Well, maybe you're just deceiving yourself, okay? Some people are not lying, so it's not intentional, but it's just being deceived, okay? In the fact, we still have wrong thoughts, wrong words, Wrong actions, okay? Remember, in the spiritual kingdom, wrong attitudes count. It's not just actions, okay? In the visible kingdom, it's just actions, okay? External. In the spiritual kingdom, internal count. So who can say, I don't have wrong thoughts, wrong intentions, right? Everybody do, okay? 
Thus, we remain humble. And if you're humble enough, you know you still need mercy. Therefore, what? You give mercy. You know you need forgiveness. Therefore, you give, forgi forgi uh, you, you give forgiveness. Okay? That's the continuation of humility. That's going through the same issue with the first one. Okay? And the sixth one is blessed are those who what? Who are pure in heart. Okay? This is based on those who have mourned for sin in their heart. Now you don't have specific sin to mourn for, but you know you are not generally totally holy yet. S uh, but you are pure in heart. You, your motive is, is for God. You live for God and for others. You don't live for self anymore. And if you have pure motive, and then what happens to your prayers? They get answered. So you see God's hands, you see he is in your life, basically you see his face. He faces towards you, not away from you, right? When God faces towards you, he blesses you, okay? And that's in the high priestly prayer, right? May God's face be towards you, okay? And that's, that's what happens to people who are pure in heart, okay? And then you can see uh, God in your life. And then you are ready to serve God, see? We walk through the steps of being a believer to a disciple, which is sanctified, then to a servant. What do you serve? What ministry do you do? What is the general ministry for all people? That is the seven beatitudes. Okay? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Okay? In the end, you know, if you are born of your father, you should have something like your father, right? If you have nothing looking like your father, then there's something wrong in your bloodline. At least it's suspected so, okay? And then in the ancient time, you're like your father more than what you look. It's also what you do, okay? In the ancient time, usually the, the sons will inherit the father's profession, right? If the father is a mason, you're a mason. If he's a carpenter, you're a carpenter, okay? <laughs> so generally, if our father is a peacemaker, didn't Second Corinthians, which we just finished preaching, say God has made the reconciliation his own ministry and he's given us the same ministry of reconciliation, which is the ministry of the new covenant, right? So that God has made reconciliation with man his personal ministry. It's almost his job now. Ever since the fall of man, you see, God uh, worked for seven days to create the world and then he rested for a day and maybe a little more until man sinned. And after that, he started working again. What is he working at? Trying to save mankind, right? Reconciliation is his ministry. So if you are like your father, you make that your personal ministry, okay? Our general ministry is to make people come to peace with God through accepting Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, our cover and our deliverer. And then also, because of that, be transformed, therefore, making peace with other people. Okay? We all have two dimensions, right? Vertical and horizontal. Okay? Make people have peace vertically and horizontally. We do it first, then inviting others to do the same. That is our ministry. And you can only do this after the previous step, being pure in heart and see God in your life. So you, uh, your prayer gets answered. And it's only through your prayers and the mighty acts of God that others are turned to God. It's not your work, you're just a channel, okay? But let, when you are pure, you can pray, then your prayer gets answered, then others whom you have contact with and you have demonstrated the witness of Christ in love and truth, and they might be attracted to join the family of God. And that is your ministry for all of us, everyone, every Christian, is a minister of God, okay? In certain senses, okay? We are all his servants. That's our goal. We grow from a disciple, from believer to disciple to a servant, which actually is translated as minister in some times. Servant, minister, or slave, same word in the New Testament, okay? That's dual. So let us re remember, we are living in this world to do good works. What's the best work one can do? to lead people to peace with God and with one another. Okay. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God.
Now, all of that is given by Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to pay for our sins with his sacrifice that showed his love. Also, he covered our sins with his blood and uh, uh, therefore with his love. Okay? Truth, we need a redeemer. Love, he covers us from God's wrath. Receive both truth and love, and therefore we can live and spread truth and love. Jesus gave us his body, we take this bread in remembrance of him. Jesus shed his blood, we drink this in remembrance of him. Dear Lord, our Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Son of Man, our Deliverer, our Savior, our Head, our Lord, and our spiritual husband for now and our judge and king for later. We come to you to acknowledge who you are and thank you for what you have done. We pray that by our acceptance of you as our Savior and Lord, we will enjoy not only the salvation, but also we can be sanctified as we cooperate with the Holy Spirit who is in us. And we pray that your will, which is making us holy and making us to be like you, so that when you come again, we will not be in conflict, but in harmony. We pray that your will be done on us um, gradually, but as fast as possible as we can take. We pray that in your holy name. Amen.